Hello and welcome back. So today I'm at my editing desk again, or as I always call it, my cursing desk. So I just want to talk you through what my experiences have been with Photoraw 2024, how I've been using it, and um, what's new in it too as well, of course, in comparison to 2023. Let's get into it and I'll talk you through it all. Now the first thing I have to say, I don't know what's in the coffee over on one, but whatever it is, I definitely love to have some. Because the difference between Photoraw 2023 and Photoraw 2024, they're like night and day. Saying it's an upgrade is not doing it justice. This is more like a complete rebuild rather than anything else. It's like they just said, not nah, at scrap it all, destroy everything and just build from the start and go all the way back up long again. So what are all these big new differences Kieran you keep talking about? Well, I suppose the first ones really are the speed increases. And I'm gonna get to all these points individually in a minute. We have Brilliance AI, we have batch editing, we have the new interface then too as well. We also have improved highlight recovery, our ultimate highlight recovery as they're calling it. We have the search bar and we also have breadcrumbs now too as well so we can see exactly where our photographs have come from and we can just quickly alternate between recently edited photographs too as well again. I'm gonna explain that in a minute. <laughs> Then we can also add text as a layer on your photographs. So if you're into graphic design or if you want to pop out photographs that are a bit more descriptive, describing where they are, you can do that. The other really cool thing is we also have the ability now to paste pixels. Now you might say, what's pasting pixels? If I can even, it's like a tongue twister, isn't it? Pasting pixels. So what is pasting pixels, Kieran, and why is this important? Well, it's not really important, but it's a handy little thing to do. Let's say if you have a watermark as a PNG file, you can literally just copy and paste that onto the image you can transform the size, your opacity, all that sort of stuff. Again, I'm going to show you that in a minute. There are a lot more improvements in this than the ones I'm just talking about, but these are the big ones. These are the ones you should know about. There has also been improvements in Keyword AI too as well. And if you don't know what Keyword AI is, I'm going to leave a link to the description down below or I might pop it up in one of the corners here or something so you can actually watch my previous video on Keyword AI, which is really cool and really handy if you use keywords for finding your images. The first really big thing on one talk about every single time you hear Photoraw being mentioned is the speed increases. And even in my beta version, when I first did the review, I noticed there was a big difference. In the final version, it's every bit as good, if not fractionally better. And what I've noticed is it is three times faster going from browse to edit. Then it is five times faster cataloging folders. And it's about three times faster switching photographs in the film strip. And the updating presets is about two times faster. So these are all really big improvements, which is why I find it hard to say this is just an upgrade. It's more like a complete rebuild. So well done on one, because I have definitely noticed a difference. So this brings us to the new interface. And the interface in Photoraw 2024 has been improved. It looks a bit more modern. It looks a bit sleeker. The fonts are nicer, higher contrast. It just looks a bit better. It's not, everything isn't being thrown at you straight away. So the tools are kind of hidden away in their own different sections and whatnot. Again, I'm gonna show you here now in a second because I've got a few common questions people have been asking me like, well, how do I adjust the brush size? I can't find it anymore, Kieran. How do I add a graduated filter? How do I how do I change the size of the, the push tool? How do I change the size of the healing brush in, it, brush in the surpass? How do I do all these things? Well, come on, let's get into it and I'll show you. So I'm here in Browse in On1 Photoraw 2024. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick a photograph. I'm going to pick, yeah, pick this one. Yeah. So I'm just going to double click on this now. And boom, there it is, opened out straight away in the Develop tab. Now, as you can see in the shot, this shot has a number of different complications. The first being is I actually cut the filter holder on that. So how do we get rid of it? We apply lens correction. So lens correction is automatically going to remove the vast majority of that. Now the other thing we want to do is straighten the horizon. So how will we straighten the horizon? It's really very simple. We need to go over to the crop tool. So the crop tool is over to the left panel here. And this is the crop tool. It'll highlight it there now. So when I click on that, it's going to come up. And up on top here, we have our rule of thirds, which is the grid overlay. We have the aspect ratio, we can leave it original. We can have our level. So if I click on level here now, so what I can do is I can click on the horizon, click on that and drag across and then line it up at the horizon and let go. And boom, that's our horizon leveled. Just press enter there now and there we go. Straight away, we're after getting rid of the skewed horizon 
we're after getting rid of the vignetting and the filter holder. So the next thing we need to do now is click on Bullion's AI. And fingers crossed, this is going to do a fairly reasonable job on this now. <laughs> I'm hoping. Oh, that's that's actually good enough. First time I edited that shot in on one. So this is, um, yeah, that looks really good. Now, because of the sea conditions and whatnot at the time, you can see there was a few little um, water droplets on the lens. It was practically impossible to stop that. It was a really wild afternoon on the coast. So they need to be removed. So you can remove those with the healing brush. So the healing brush is over here. So if I click on that. Now the first thing with the healing brush open is you might say, that's actually quite a bit small. I want a bigger brush size, but how do I adjust it? I can't, I can't find it. And this is one of the most popular questions that people have been asking me. How do you adjust the size of the healing brush? So what I'm going to do is going to go up to the top of the photograph. And when you do, this drop down menu appears. You can see size here. So if I click on size, watch the size of the healing brush getting bigger and smaller. So I'm going to set it roughly around there now for the clouds maybe, or look there for the clouds. You can adjust the feathering then too as well. So I can uh, give it a second. Yeah, feathering is adjusting. Actually, what I'll do is I'll make the size a bit bigger so you can see that a bit easier and then adjust the feathering and you can see how the feathering is actually changing. So I'm going to leave that. Yeah, we'll leave it around there, let's say. So then you can adjust the opacity. So again, the opacity of the healing brush and then the healing mode. So you have heal, stamp, copy, or move. So I'm going to leave it on heal there now. And what I'm going to do is just bring the size back down along here now again. We're going to go back down maybe around, we'll chance 250. It's, yeah, it's a bit too big, sorry. So yeah, we'll try 200. That's better. So I go bang. Looks good. And go here. Bang. Looks good again. And what I'm going to do for the last one then, so by the rocks, I'm just going to bring that down. I'm going to bring that smaller. And I am just going to paint around this. So just hold down and continue painting. And boom, there we go. And how does that look? I can also, if I don't like how that looks, I can actually just move that over here and say, actually, no, I prefer to look at that. That looks really good there now. So this now brings us to how do we get a grad filter? Well, there's two different ways of getting a graduated filter. The first being is we go over here to local and we click on add adjustment. And what we can do here then is we select the region. So you can use mask AI. I can pick whatever I want. So I can go down here. None, background, foreground, flora, natural, water, snow, sky. But if I just go on paint in and just click on apply, let's close that down now. So what that's going to do now is if I adjust, say if I adjust my exposure way down along and if I paint in the sky here, you can see that is actually dropping the sky by minus 2.6. Whereas if I just delete that there now and go up to the top, here is my masking bug and I'm on gradient. So I just pop that in, turn my filter the right way around, adjust my feathering and I can then just mess around with my exposure because that's obviously too much. So if I increase my exposure again a bit and say, look, actually, do you know, that's more the look I was going for. And that's how you do it. The other handy thing is being able to go back and to retrace your steps and say, actually, you know what? I really don't like this. I don't like the way that photograph has ended out. I've done something really wrong with this. I can go to local adjustments. And if I just close that down along, I have adjustments, I have Brilliance AI, so I can actually switch on and off the different sections of Brilliance AI to see is one of those causing the problem. Or I can go to my adjustment and say, right, is that one? And you say, yeah, that's actually too much. Look how much of a difference that's making. That's actually too much. So if I just click on it, I can just quickly just change my previous setting and say, actually, do you know, that looks better now. And I can go back to my develop module and I can tone and color and I can just boost my overall exposure if I want and say, that's what I'm looking for. That's what I wanted. That is the shot I wanted. And all of a sudden I'm done. So it's very easy to correct any mistakes you've made and just get it back on the right track again. So the one other thing, just while we're inside here in editing, you can see down below on the bottom here, we have our breadcrumbs. So I can actually see the folder path. So it's on one edits desktop, current users, window, SSD. So you can actually see the file path or the breadcrumbs of where 
that image has been found. You can also see down below here then recent files. So you can actually see the recent files I've also opened as well as the recent folders I've opened to as well. So that's really handy if you just want to flick quickly from one photograph to the next. The one thing I haven't covered as of yet is the presets or the styles in the left panel here. So there's a whole lot of different styles and just, just for dramatic effect I'm going to pick the black and white one just so you can see a real change in the photograph. Give it a couple of seconds and here we go, that's B6. And if we go over B4, B2, B1, and you can see what effect those different styles have on your photograph. Now the really cool thing up on top here is the AI Style Advisor. When I click on this, it's going to open out a little sub-menu and you have in here My Style and On One Team. Now what My Style does is if I click on it here, it'll probably tell you is that it's actually going to suggest specific edits for you far the likes of that photograph because it knows your photography style of editing. But until then, you can use the On One Team one, which is where they have a load of different presets loaded in so you can actually load whichever one you want onto your photograph. Now, the one thing I should say here is this photograph has already been edited quite a bit. So um, putting another preset on top of it could be a small bit too much. So how do we add text as a layer? Well, what we do is we go up here to the layer section up here in the top right hand corner and if I click on that it'll open out our layers panel and here the T, the big T stands for text so if I click on that it'll open out our text panel and as you can see the text here is already pre-filled so what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in my own text right so there's my text okay so what I can do now is I can mark that as bold if I want it all sorry if I select it all first I can mark it as bold italic or I can underline it or all three obviously so, and if I go back and if I say, look, what I want to do is I actually want to make that blue. So I'm going to put it as blue and I'm going to select OK. If I select all that and I can just bring it back to white again. So bring it back to full white and click on OK. And now that's back as white again. And again, as I say, you can adjust the size there too as well. So I can adjust the size up along. Sorry, if I actually adjusted it or selected it, I can adjust the size back up along and say, perfect. That's exactly it. That's what I was looking for. Then we have alignment. So you can select alignment. You can have it in the center of the box, on the right hand side or on the left hand side of the box. So we leave it in the center. You have spacing. So that's the spacing between the lines and between the characters. Down below here then we have transform and in transform you can select the width and the height and also the angle of the box itself. Finally then we have opacity. And opacity here, we have the opacity of the text. So you can adjust the opacity of the text itself and you can also do a color fill. So let's say if I wanted to put, um, we'll say I wanted to put a black on that there now. Okay, so if I select OK there now, there's a dark box there now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust the opacity of the background. So I can pull that in and then I can also adjust the size of this. So I can say, all right, how does that look now? And I can pull the pull the box up along here. So if you wanted something specific, you just wanted to write on an image, that'll do it for you. So this brings us to the final part then, pasting pixels. And what I use it for primarily is adding a watermark. So what I'm going to do is going to open out a folder there where my watermark is in. So I'm going to grab it and I'm just going to drop it in. And it automatically goes to the center of the screen. And if I zoom in, there it is. So Kieran Hayes photography, it's kind of hard to see now in that color over that image. But what I can do is if I just zoom back out long, I can go here up in the top left hand corner to the transform tool and I can literally pull that anywhere around the image I want to put it. So I can put it in the middle on the bottom or I can put it in the middle on the top or I can put it in the clouds here where it's kind of hard to copy out along or I can put it here so it kind of stands out nicely and is nicely framed there or I can stick it in the water here too as well. And I can also go along then and adjust the opacity up in the top right hand corner here now. I can just bring the opacity down and all of a sudden you can get the exact look you're looking for. So if you want it really standing out, you can stick it out here and put it up in the top corner or even make it bigger if you want and put it up there and say, look, that's exactly the way I want it, job done. So as you can see, after all that, Photo Raw 2024 has changed quite a bit. This was my final version review. And again, I'm sharing this with you today because I love technology, I love photography, and this is right at the cutting edge at the moment. But the one question I have for you is, what would you like to see in Photo Raw 2024? 
what you feel is missing, what would you like to have improved, or what would you like to get from some other bit of editing software and put into Photo Raw 2024. I'd love to hear your thoughts and um, I'll definitely share them with on one when I get a chance. So thanks again for watching. Mind yourselves, see you out there and take care everyone.